You take the trouble to construct a civilization, to, to build a society based on the principles of, of principle. You endeavor to make communicable sense out of natural order, morality out of the unnatural disorder of man's mind. You make government and art and realize that they are, must be, both the same. You bring things to the saddest of all points, to the point where there is something to lose. And all at once, through all the music, through all the sensible sounds of men building, attempting, comes the Dies Irae. And what is it? What does the trumpet sound? Up yours. I suppose there's justice to it, after all the years. Up yours. George says that. It's about eh, the middle point of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf by Edward Elby. It's an award-winning play. Uh, it's a it's a daring work of art. It is one of the classics of the modern American theater. Started in 1962, even. With the great Uta Hagen. Who is a really good actress, I must admit. And it's supposed to be one of those plays that, you know, if you're into theater, you should read. And it's also representative of the modern play, in almost every sense. Characters, they speak with lots of platitudes about the uselessness of things like principles. They speak in naturalistic dialogue that's stylized because it's the theater, but it's totally how real people talk, guys. This is, I mean, this just flies off your tongue as it does the page. This is a play that basically says, up yours. Isn't that wonderful? Doesn't that just fill your heart with joy? A story <laughs> about two old people, middle-aged to older, who have a terrible marriage, who invite after a long party in the middle of the night, a younger couple who are new to the university faculty over to their house, and we realize that they're just as messed up as this old couple. They seem idealistic enough at the beginning, but slowly the layers are revealed. And just as the play suggests, you, got, you start with the skin, and you finally go down to the bone, but you really gotta get to the marrow. And what's after the marrow? Well, children have pretty tough marrow. They're resilient, as George says late in the show. But if children are resilient, then adults must be the most fragile. Because after all, when you get older, things start to crumble down, even though they might seem a little less chaotic. Up yours, life says. So says who's afraid of Virginia Woolf. That's the truth, the show says. Quote, all truth being relative. I mean, do I really need to say any more on this show? Just from those few lines? Of course, there's a pun in the all truth being relative, meaning that George and Martha have constructed a lie, that they have a son that they love, who doesn't visit them all the time, yada yada. The idea being that the truth is that the relative is not real, and thus the truth of it is relative to whoever's talking about it. Nick and Honey, the young couple, don't know that the son is not real, but George and Martha have an unspoken agreement that you should never bring up the son, and you don't kill the son. Why? Because the relative truth. Then, once revealed to be false, 
becomes absurd. At its heart, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is an absurdist play, though it tricks you by not looking like one at first. In fact, the entire play is all about tricks and games and the follies of man. Power plays, struggles of futility, lying to yourself, whether it's going in a drunken stupor or lying about your own competence as a person. It's all about that. And in a sense, this play is a look at the 60s mentality of a sort of Cold War post roses and uh, butterflies world. And it's pretty powerful. Not because I agree with it. Not because it's, you know, really profound, but because it is pretty well written. The dialogue does leap off the page in many instances. I think it's a little long. Uh, performances run about three hours. But you should read this, especially if you're into literature, especially if you want to know the kind of things that people are writing that are praised. Because this isn't something that has no plot. This isn't something that has no theme or point. It's all very well integrated, although I will admit there are sections of characters monologuing to each other. I didn't quite understand what the point was. But I would suggest reading this, if not seeing a performance of it, because it can show you just how dramatic the absurd can be. You see, it starts off like a comedy almost. Two old people, very drunk, coming home from a late party, uh, Martha's getting words incorrectly and George is, is correcting her. You know, she, she mixes up what Nick's profession is f through the first half of the show. And, and everyone's like, oh no, he's part of, she thinks he's part of the biology department, but he's the math department or vice versa. You know, it's funny. It's very hilarious. Uh, and there are some genuinely funny bits in here. There's a lot of good wordplay. And, uh, you know. The if you try and count how many times the characters take a drink or get a new, uh, new fill of whiskey, uh, it could be fun to to track that. But if you notice, all the things I've been actually excited or animated about are not really the play itself as a full integrated thing. It's bits and pieces, because that's all you can get with a show like this with a show that tells you that any truth you have is crazier than the lies that you uphold. And if the lies get found out, which they probably will, well, then that makes things even more absurd. And why'd you do it? And why did you do this? And what's it all amount to? The answer's in the title. What does this mean? There is not, to my knowledge, any reference to Virginia Woolf other than this quote, which comes in the form of a song that the characters sing from the party they came from. Uh, they thought it was super funny, although Martha can't tell you who came up with it, the context of the who's afraid of Virginia Woolf, uh, why it's funny, why it started. She says that, oh, George, you found it so funny back then. Why aren't you laughing now? Ha <laughs> ha. And that's a funny moment of juxtaposition between the two characters. It's, it's good stuff. And it goes through the play. And as things get more dramatic, as the lies keep piling up and start slowly crumbling down and things start being revealed. And oh, my God, over this course of this one night in basically real time. The theme comes up again and again, and it comes up in more drastic circumstances until finally at the end, when it's when Martha's vision comes crumbling down and George literally kills their fake son in front of other people and in front of herself, he asks, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? And she says, I am, George. I am. And the play ends. 
with her dreams shattered. Him, I think, basically insane by that point. And the young couple, who seem to be idealists, are shown to be... <laughs> one, Honey is a an alcoholic because she can't get pregnant. And rushes away into a world of fantasy and drinking to excess, which seems to be uh, facilitated by Nick uh, in a kind of disgusting sort of way. And Nick, who wants to climb up the ranks of a university because... I don't know. A power grab? Because people are garbage? There are no heroes here, remind you. So what's the point of that? What's the point of that song? What's the point of any of it? Well, we have no context for the song, like I said. We don't know who came up with it, why George found it funny, what the context was, and we never find out. All we see is that this song keeps popping up, and we first laugh at it, and then cry with it. And that's all you're left with. Why is she afraid of Virginia Woolf? Because the truth is relative, and the truth becomes absurd. And in that sense, even though I found my heart racing at parts of this show, I mean it. There are three distinct points I won't reveal where things get heated, and the way in which Albert Alby progresses things just through the writing, it, it's really intense and worth it just to read it for that alone that kind of experience. But the whole point of it is that there is no point and that you'll never know the answers. And this is a classic. What else is there to say, right? It's just a show about a, about, about a bad marriage, people will tell you. They'll just tell you, oh, it's, it's, it's a riveting, funny show. And that's it. When really it's just telling you, up yours. Well, up yours, Edward Albee, because even though you can write some mean dialogue and some funny bits and some pretty good stuff, what's it amount to? I'll wait. Can you take a play like this seriously, if that's the point? If I directed it, or were in it, I would not take it seriously. And in a way, from the very beginning, I found it unreal. I got into the dialogue, but I kind of had to get into it. The dialogue felt weird in places, and it, it didn't quite ring true to me in its stylization. I'm not sure why, but I never believed it. My heart raced, but I never fully engrossed myself like normal. And that should say something about me. And if you have a similar reaction, it should say something about you. And if you love the show, ask yourself why. What is it about it that you enjoy? I think the main thing to take away from this show, which you should read, is not who's afraid of Virginia Woolf, but who's afraid of you? After all, if the truth can be absurd and break a person, what if you bring the truth to someone else? I'll wait. Buster.